Hey guys, in this behind the scenes video, I wanted to go over how I made uh, this dumbbell glitch animation. I'll have the video playing right now and I will also have the original video in the description for you to check out as well as share with your friends. So the three pieces of software that I used to create this animation was Blender for the 3D stuff, Adobe After Effects for all the compositing and most of the glitching things, and Premiere Pro is where I did all the sound design and putting everything together. Now the first thing I wanted to go over is how I modeled the dumbbell. If you have experience in 3D software, you know that this is a very simple thing to model. It's just a cylinder. And then what I was doing was I was extruding, up, scaling, extruding some more on a Z axis, extruding again, you know, and then just bringing all this out. Uh, something like that and then you know I just beveled the sides bevel it a little bit and that's how I got the shape for the dumbbell you know just doing that and then mirroring it onto the opposite side as well and once that was done I got into texturing as for texturing uh, pretty much what I did is I had actual pictures of the dumbbell and I used those to create the textures uh, even the metal grip part the only part that is uh, procedural is this part right here but all of this is just grabbing directly from the images and with the shading what I did is I grabbed the image and plugged it into a bump map in order to give some uh, surface imperfection and bumps uh, not sure if you can see a well in the video but you know there's a little bit of bumpiness going on just to add a bit of realism next I wanted to go over the glitches so these glitches right here uh, the rotation was animated by myself, but there's a little bit of jitter to it and that jitter was created with a built-in sign function that, you know, shakes it a little bit left to right. So that's where you get that jitter from. Going further in the animation, uh, this is a keyframe array modifier and that popping you see, that's a displace modifier. I just wanted to give a little bit of visual interest when a new Dumba was popping up and then when it goes away, that was a decimate modifier that makes it look all glitchy like that. In the next part, what I did is I animated a checker texture over time, so it's not the x-axis that's moving the texture, it's on the z-axis. As for physics, the dumbbell is a rigid body, and the error window is a clot simulation, and I just made it so that they had collisions with each other. And then later in the animation, what we have is these are just uh, dumbbells that appear and then scale, and I wanted to go over this last part uh i just wanted to let you guys know whoever's using blender you can simulate cloth of an object that is much simple uh if blender is struggling to do a, a cloth simulation with a specific object so for example this mesh right here you can see all the faces that there were uh, blender was a little bit struggling with doing a simulation for all these faces but what i have is i have a much simpler mesh that's attached to the dumbbell with a mesh deform modifier and just to give you a better look at how simple this model is that's the model right there it takes much less computations to process this than the actual dumbbell once i was happy with my animation uh, i rendered a regular pass without the shadows as well as a shadow pass and that allowed me to have better control over the shadows just matching the shadows with the original shot here in after effects i wanted to go over a few things that i did in compositing obviously you have your footage on the bottom then you have on top of that the shadow pass which i had the opacity brought down to 85 to match with the footage then on top of that you have the render and after that you know everything else is just playing around and adding additional effects next i wanted to go over how i created this glitch effect so i applied this glitch effect to the render without the shadow pass as well as the shadow pass itself and the three effects that are used to create that look is card dance bevel alpha and 3d glasses so if i disable all three effects you could see that this is the base footage card dance is what gives you the displacement and a card dance is driven by this glitch layer which drives the glitch animation after card dance i added bevel alpha which gives a uh, edgy look to it which kind of separates the glitches and makes it stand out even more the last effect is 3d glasses which gives this uh kind of like this color channel shift look to it that i really liked now this glitch effect is a reoccurring theme in this edit like i have another glitch right there and for the error signs, I use the same effects 3D glasses and an animated bevel alpha. 
uh, to kind of give it like a flashy chromatic aberration look. Now the icons that pop up, they're 3D layers and they're affected with a displacement map that is driven by the same glitch fractal noise. You know, some more glitches using the same techniques. Another look I did is kind of like an unloaded look where it looks like it hasn't been rendered properly yet. Uh, and that is pretty much what I did is I did viewport renders of solid view as well as a uh, wireframe view. As you can see, that's how it looked without it. And the solid view was animated with a colorama, which gave it an interesting shift effect. And then here's some more compositing. Then I have some more glitches. And once I was happy with all the compositing I did in After Effects, I brought it into Premiere Pro. Uh, and I exported from After Effects into Media Encoder uh, as Apple ProRes, so I didn't lose anything due to compression and then i simply just added all my sound design right here on the bottom changing the pitch of a few sounds using a lot of different sound bites to kind of give this sense of chaos then i added a lot of glitch effects to really sell the kind of the glitch look i was going for and that was pretty much it and then i exported it and shared it to social media and that brings this impromptu behind the scenes video to an end uh the reason why i made this video is because actually uh i posted this animation on r slash blender as well as uh the after effects subreddit and it gained a lot of traction i think on r slash blender it got 1000 upvotes which is pretty impressive so i just wanted to show you guys uh you know my workflow and how i made this animation uh, i know i could have went into the technical details and explained them a little bit better but you know as i said again just wanted to give you guys an idea of how i made this and maybe it could inspire you to make something similar to this thank you for watching this video all the way through and i hope i see you in the next video